Dia. What up, though? OG Kenny, O underscore G underscore Kenny, every time from the streets TV. And guess what? <clears throat> Man, I'm still sick. I've been so down bad about the last week. It's like my sinuses was, bad. I don't know what's been going on. However, in the midst of all that, not getting a haircut, running around, delivering food, helping with the nonprofits, trying to keep content going for the channel and just period, for the sanity. Cause like I said, it's like my therapy a little bit, right? So I appreciate y'all for tuning in again. Welcome back to the channel. If you have not done so, please subscribe as you get to watching the content, the video. If you find something valuable, funny, or interesting in it, go ahead, smash that like, notification bell, get in the comment section, and hey, <clears throat> comment what you want and share the content, right? So, if, I, if I'm correct, I left off, right? Talking about Macomb. My, like, so this is what's going on without my Macomb at this time, right? My last few incidents before I leave Macomb level two and go to level one, because I didn't have that much time left, because according to the MDOC, right? So, we got this thing, we had these little crew, we used to call them the 50 Pump Crew, right? Now, 50 Pump Crew is a slip. It's something that you say to somebody and you're trying to be funny, and you're trying to, you know, you're trying to slip them, you're playing a slip game. Or why they call it the gay jokes. <clears throat> so our thing was you playing too much, you doing too much, um, you took something, a man that wasn't, you know, you weren't supposed to, you owe me 50 pumps. Meaning, bend over, grab your ankles, and I'ma hump your butt. It never happened, of course. It was just a threat. It was the hanging it over somebody's head. It was the shock value of it, right? And nobody ever did the 50 pumps. Let's just say that. But let me tell you about how. One particular time, the 50 pump rule, or the 50 pump joke rather, got blown way out of proportion, and dudes that was supposed to have been cool ended up grabbing knives and went down on each other. Hold on. <clears throat> so, we on the yard, pull ups, doing pull ups. And my man, like, this is how it really start, right? Um, it was all morning talking about they had this pull up challenge. We gonna see who can get to 40 pull-ups straight. Now, I ain't doing no 40 pull-ups, I never could. I still don't do pull-ups all the way up. I do them enough to where I can feel it, my back tight. I ain't doing all that, right? That's not what I'm doing. That's not the um. That's not what I signed up for. So, anywho, I'm in this position where I'm around all these dudes who way colder at the pull-up game, the bar game, the calisthenics game than I am. So what I'm doing is, I'm. I'm trying to test myself, I'm trying to test my gangsta and see how far I can go. I know I can't get the 40 bar though, right? So the energy around anything you do when you're incarcerated gets exemplified or magnified for the due fact that dudes in there stressed out. Listen, I told y'all before, they play chess and it's, it gets violent sometimes. You understand what I'm saying? When they, they sometimes when they're playing Tonk and Uno and they get violent because dudes really got other stuff on their mind and on their chest. So it's always a good idea to know who you're playing with and don't play with everybody. Sometimes it's good to not even play at all depending on where you're at. But if you don't know nobody for real, for real, so that slip game get real delicate. And it started off over a simple pull-up game. All these dudes had to do was say, we're going to bet on these pull-ups, right? And I think it was like a bag of coffee or something like that. I'm not in it because I can't win. When they go from the morning time, warming up, doing them, talking back and forth, smack, like, okay, I didn't got the 15 dudes. So I got 20 easy. So he busts out 20, probably 23. He said, I got that 40. I'm about to rest my back for later on. Throughout the course of the day, they back and forth, jugging at each other because they agreed to do it after last uh, um, um, a yard, which is ready at the noon time. So, cause you know when it get dark, they close the yard down early. They might give you a small window to be on your yard that's right in front of your unit, your little courtyard for a minute, but that's it. So after lunch, they gonna go back at it. Cool, bag of coffee on the line. Now, these two brothers, they're supposed to be all right. I ain't saying they best friends are cool, but they always kick it when they on the yard and the unit. Sometimes they play chess. Now, I'm gonna leave it at that, right? Cause I'm still cool with um, one of the brothers, right? 
Um, I don't see him all the time, but we all right. Boom. You get to the point where the pull-ups is going in play, right? And um, we on the yard. I didn't got me. I probably at the time no cap, no no BS. I probably was doing at max 20 pull-ups, and then it started going down about 17, 18 over time. But that was my max. So as I'm seeing these boys blowing through 25, 30. You know, other dudes, dude warming up a little bit. He go up there and do him a quick set of 20 to warm his back up. And then he stretched. Dude, do him a few, he stretched. They like, y'all ready? We're going to go. So this is the thing. Instead of them going one at a time, they're going to go together and have them counted out side by side because the barber's kind of long. So it's like one, two, three. They get to the going. And I see both of them got good steam. Hey, my man get the bang in his chest on the bar. Right? Mm. Hey, bing, bing. My man laughed like he over here throwing me off with this, you know. Or whatever. Hold on, let me get some water. He like this bro, he, this brother throwing me off, banging the bar. Stop crying. Stop crying. Get money. So, bro who banging the chest ended up hitting the 40 ball before the other brother. Let's just say that. Now, 50 pumps come in right here. He was close. And he said the reason why he lost is because he was distracting me. Now. We already know. When it comes to men's sports, ain't no excuses. Do your set. <clears throat> do what you got to do. Bust it out. We don't want to hear about no distractions. Who walked past? Somebody fought it. None of that. Do your set. So, peep game. In the midst of them going back and forth, I don't even keep paying attention because I'm in there. I got like three or four tapes on me. It's still when tapes was a thing. You ain't had them MP3. I still got, I got about three or four tapes on me. So, I'm going through about to switch me some tapes because I'm really out there working out. I'm about to get me some push-ups in, a couple of dips. Make it a full round um, um, upper body workout, right? All I hear is the brother said, 50 pumps. 50 pumps, bro. I told you I don't pay that B A, you know, that B I T C H A S S stuff. Don't play with me, bro. Watch your mouth. He like, dog, I was just playing, man. I don't care, dog. I told you I don't play, man. I ain't like, you know. And this is my thing. Watch who you playing with. Some things are triggers for people, right? Ain't no telling what, you know, happened to that brother in his past that made him like that, but he didn't like none of that stuff. And that was cool. Everybody won for everybody. Everybody don't got a thick skin like that. Me, I grew up in a household full of uncles and, and around people and, and, and father figures and whatnot who would roast you, who would slip you and all type of stuff. So it was nothing new. I had a very thick skin for that. Um, so I'm laughing it off like, man, y'all bugging, right? Dude said, man, stop crying, bro. You sound like a little broad now, right? Now, you already don't like you playing with him about the 50 pump thing. What would make you think this brother is in the line of thinking to where he wants you to even play with him talking about even in a broad perspective? Like, you seem like a broad, you acting like a broad, you sound like a broad, right? Excuse my sinuses, man. I'm through. I told you I'm kind of messed up. But look, this dude walked up to the brother and said, if I'm a broad, prove I'm a broad. I'm going to see you in the morning. I'm, I'm through talking. Strap up. Now, I'm still laughing a little bit because I'm trying to make it lighthearted and ease attention because that's just my nature, right? But when he says strap up, everybody know what strap up, man. You get that Watha Watha, that Nat Turner. He going to get him a blade and telling dude, get him one. I don't know how it got that serious to me. But like I said, everybody got their trigger. Everybody got their limit. It got that serious for the brother. Long story short, that next morning, everybody want to see what's going to happen. We talking to the brother on the way back, telling him, calm down, strap up, strap up, man, I'm built like that. He, now the brother, no, let me go, bro. The brother lame, the brother, the brother, the brother lame. I don't even call the brother out his name, but he on some foul gay stuff right now, bro. Everybody joke all the time, now he taking it to the chest. And we telling him, like, bro, bro never really played like that, though, if you remember. We all joke and laugh it off, because it ain't no big thing to us, but hey, but come on. So, we like, we just, we gonna, y'all, we gonna get y'all together and talk. He like, ain't nothing to talk about. Dude talking about strap up, bro. You know where I'm from? You know you know where I'm from? You know who raised me? You know who blood pumping through my body right now? I'm like, oh my God, what about the kids, right? So I'm like, I get it, but I don't get it. Because my thing is, I, I've never put myself in a position when I was incarcerated for to let words provoke me to do some garbage to keep me in there for longer. I'm going home to a bag. I'm going home to my peoples, my babies. If, you know what I'm saying? That type of mentality. To, to life. I don't care what nobody in here in these dismal crypts talking about. I'm going home to life and living. So I didn't get it. I got it, but I didn't get it. Not to where, you know, not both of them going to my strapping up. Anyway, next morning, everybody on edge. These brothers both 
got blades on him. It's obvious. It's tense. So when the, the brother who was offended come down, you know, the rock or whatever, he like, what's up? What we doing? What we doing? And he like, bro, I got my strap. You got your strap. You already said it when I'm telling Why is we talking? If you felt that way about what I said, bro, for real, for real, you know me, then let's go. But whatever, if you got something else in your mind, then that's what you need to address, bro. Don't take it out on me because you feel the way about whatever. I told y'all MFs a million times, stop playing with me with that B word. Stop calling me, hey, you looking good. Don't do that to me, bro. I don't like none of that, bro. So now the brother Reed X, now I'm going to say Reed X thing because I, I want to salute Reed X to this day for being an a intercessor for that situation. Reed X walk up and say, hold on, look. We got two kings. We got two strong-headed individuals. Both of y'all fit for battle and war. Both of y'all had something in common and still do got something in common. What I think y'all need to do is establish boundaries and then respect those boundaries. The brother say he don't like this. You need to respect that, brother. It's going to be something this brother don't like that you're going to do and the vice versa. So let's establish and respect those boundaries amongst us as black men, as soldiers, as kings. Come on, what is we doing? You got babies. You ain't got no baby, so you're going to want some. It's like he, either he giving them the math. We ain't had to say nothing. It's one of them situations where I, I, listen, I'm not, I'm about one of the youngest dudes in the clique anyway. Everybody else probably late 20s, early to mid 30s. I'm 20 something, 22 years old, right? So I felt a little out of place kind of even saying something anyway. So I gave my little two cent like, man, I just want to see brother, you know, be at peace, man. We can get this money. We can work out together. We can build each other up, crack some atoms. All oh, this is big. So... It didn't seem like they were trying to back down for a minute, man. But the brother who did the offending hugged Reed X and said, man, huh, man. He gave him his blade and walked away and said, man, I'm good, man. I don't want no smoke. If bro got something, he feel about me. I'm turning my back on it, and he can he can get at me, man. But, bro, you right, bro. You right, bro. I'm going home, bro. All of us going home. Tighten up, man. And the brother still was mad. You can tell he's mad. He was offended still. But after a day or two, we started, we, we talked. He wouldn't apologize to the brother. He wouldn't apologize. He explained to him, bro, I don't like that, bro. My uncle and my daddy used to get drunk. And um, because I ain't like sports. That's what you see. This is, his, this is him explaining his stuff. I ain't like sports. I ain't like nothing. I like to draw. I like to chill. I like to dress fly. They used to call me a little punk. Little this, little that. You know what I mean? Demeaning, emasculating terms and whatnot. And it took root with him to where that was his trigger. And it felt like a trigger, because soon he said it was like, bro, it ain't that serious. But to him it was. But I just, I learned a lot during these times, because a lot of these stories I tell you, of course I've seen a lot of other wild stuff that I could tell y'all too, but some of that stuff's so vulgar, I don't even want to ever repeat it. But some of this stuff, most of the stuff I tell y'all, it's because they were key moments in me changing the way I thought about certain things. It was a perspective switch or shift, right? And I'm like, because you know, when you come from a hood mentality, it's usually, if you don't pull your gun, unless you're going to bust it. Don't pull your blade, unless you're going to use it, right? So when I seen a dude who pulled it and was the provoker of it, back down, it was something different for me and it was humbling, but he was still, I still looked at him as a soldier. I didn't look at him as, oh, he's soft. Or he, you know, I felt like I, when I grew up, you you say you're going to do it, do it. But when I seen the humility in them brothers, and like it took a few weeks and I seen them out there just, you know, kicking it, you feel me, and whatnot, and, and it was sincere. And it was like the brother always was like, man, my bro, man, I, I you know, for real, man, like I, it could have went different. And I, 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 I had to really think like this, this you know. And he started apologizing. And you could see the sincerity in his walk. So... It wasn't one of them situations where you like, you know what, you got to watch this dude. Because some dudes will do that, do the back door action, though, you know. They'll do the, what they call that, the triple cross. Okay, it's all good, bro, and then pay somebody to get you together or come and sneak up on you, you know, in a vulnerable situation. But I learned a lot about that, man. I, I love when I can see two people that's both qualified for war choose peace. You understand what I'm saying? If anything, y'all take from that, from this story, when you got the option to choose war and you know you equipped, you know you you know you know land like that, whether it's with these or these, you know you land like that and you choose peace, it's so much honor, integrity, and strength in that. 
You got to pat yourself on the back. You got to pat the other individuals who you see doing that on the back, man. That takes some 100 individuals, some real deep soul searching, a real stance, 10 toes. Anyway, man, I've been talking to y'all to death about this story. I love y'all. I just was happy to be back on, you know, online and talking to y'all because I've been, like, out of there for a week or so, right on the heels of my mama going through her situation. She's still getting her strength back and jittery. Thank you. Thank you, you know. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Shakra. Uh, all of all of the, um, the the blessings and all of the duas that everybody sent out and all the prayers that everybody sent out on behalf of my OG, on behalf of our family, we are very, very grateful. I love y'all, OG Kenny at O underscore G underscore Kenny. Every time from the streets TV, keep the change, keep them nervous. This is God's promise. You feel me? Don't argue with the customers. I love y'all, and I'm out. Ha!